How many people have watched a science fiction movie with a, a sine wave on an oscilloscope? Oh, everybody has. Oh, right. about 200 times? Has, hasn't everybody? All right. No. Now, is a, is a sine wave like this with straight lines, or are they con continuously curving? What's the definition curving. of a sine wave? Continuous curving. Yeah. The straight ones are supposed to be 360 degrees. The sine wave is what a chain does when you hang it from two points. Mm -hmm. That's a half a sine wave. No, a sine wave is usually what they weigh. Um, when, when you so it could not be the top one, no. Oh, it good. Should right, that, 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 that's top one's a sawtooth wave. Well, what, what do you yeah. call that one? Sawtooth. sawtooth. No. I didn't oh, think sawtooth? it looked like one to me. It's not a sine yeah. wave, though. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it could be a sine wave. I didn't see any. Uh -uh. It didn't look like one. I've seen um, if you get into math, uh, you've heard of sines and cosines in trigonometry? Mm -hmm. Tangents. If you uh, go beyond that and take uh, uh, calculus or something other, uh, they talk about the slope of a line or a slope of a chart. And the, the slope of a sine wave starts out at one, that is, it's going up as much as it's going across. It's going up at a 45, that, that's not quite drawn right. But it, it, it starts out going up at a 45, and it goes up here to a peak. Mm. And at that point, it's, it's going level, and it has no slope. The slope is zero. So if you, and this is called differentiation in um, kind of math stuff. If you, if you differentiate a, a sine wave, you get a value of, a, you, you should you have, you have a, a chart here, I mean, a, a, a graph. Uh, a sine curve varies between zero plus one and minus one. And interestingly, uh, the slope of it varies from plus one to zero to minus one. And it, the, the, uh, the slope of it, the differential of it, looks just like a sine wave, only it's a little out of phase. And that, that's the cosine. That's, that's some kind of advanced math stuff. All right. Um, we're, ta we're talking about oscilloscopes. And we want to show a sine wave because we're going to make a science fiction movie. So you get a sine wave. You can get it right down there in the, in the wall. And it, it, it goes like that. It goes up to a... Uh, 120 volts or something. Actually, the peak goes higher than that by the uh, quarter or two or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, um, yeah. now you you have to have something to make the line go across the face of the, of the oscilloscope. Um, you, you need a sweep. And in the old days, you could buy a, a, a scope from Heath a scope kit from Heath kit. And ICO, E-I-C-O, also made scopes, but I don't know if they were kits. And you, you get a, a, a scope with a round tube, five-inch round tube in a, in a box about that high, 18 inches high, with about a dozen tubes inside. And that would show you a sine wave. And the parameters were typically that the, the, the wave could be any frequency up to hundreds of KCs. Uh, later, they, they got up to five meg scopes. That was really good. You, you could put in a megacycle signal or two, three, and it would, it would show it. it would, I mean, it wouldn't show you, you know, 146.994, but it would show you megacycles of uh, frequencies. Um, uh, back, back up a little bit. Um, on the back of the ICO scope or the heat kit scope, there were a couple terminals, and nobody ever went back there. You, you could plug in a signal back there, and that, that would drive the sideways, the, the horizontal sweep. If you put a frequency in there, like 60 cycles or a megacycle or something, you could uh, analyze uh, the frequency of the input, the, the, the sine wave that was coming in. If the two frequencies were the same, you could get what's called a, it, it looks like it's a uh, Lesages, but it's a French word, it means Lisa Jew. You could get a Lesages figure, a Lisa Jew figure. 
if the two frequencies were the same, you'd get a circle. If they were out of phase, you'd get an oval yeah. this way or, or that way. If they were varying a few cycles, like one was uh, you know 60 cycles precise from the from the wall, and the other was your oscillator at 60 cycles, which is about you know 60.5, the circle would go you know round, round, and it would be a circle. So you could you could compare frequencies and get a Lisa Zhu figure. If the input frequency was uh, twice what you were uh, scanning the horizontal at, you'd get a, a like a figure eight. In other words, uh, if you have a figure eight, um, you have you have going across the top, you have one circle, but going down, you, you'd have two bunks because it was a figure eight. And by using that technique, you could you could compare frequencies with ratios of you know two to five or eight to three, norm. Yeah, so I just want to mention, you said two different frequencies. For years and years on RTTY, they used the oscilloscope to, and they always had the circle when you were uh, on the frequency, because they had two different frequencies, and they compared them. When they were a circle, you were right on. That's what you look for, and it, it wasn't. It was exactly like you said. That's where they used RTTY. And, and, and you were comparing what? Your local so signal? Got, you got two frequencies. You got 2125, and then you've got 1980. And when they're both opposite they're going to have a circle, and that's the way you tuned them in before we had modern like, computers. I use that method to tune one of my AM transmitters you using a parallel final tube. Mm -hmm. Using what for a reference? In other words, it takes two signals to make the old. Yeah, I get two signals to get the, the graphic I'm looking for, and I get the, the oval shape. And both the signals come from your AM transmitter? Yes, there's a sample off of each one of the finals. And I adjust variable capacitors and coils to get the phasing. Oh, to get such. the phase just the way right, you want. Right, that's what I'm measuring is the phase. So that they are in phase and combine rather than exactly. fight each other. All right. But nobody else does that. Everybody else uses a, uh, a sawtooth wave horizontal sweep. Um, The, the, the display you used to get on the, those old scopes was something like this. Um, yuck, it was dripping. It, I think old. that thing's overdone with. Yeah. Um, you, you put in a signal, whether it's 60 cycles or, uh, you know, a mega cycle, and you get a compressed picture on the right-hand side of your uh, scope tube. Uh, the reason for that is you're, you're looking for a sawtooth wave like this, and that that sawtooth wave is going to make the the uh, trace on the oscilloscope go across the screen. Well, in in actuality, what they used was a resistor and a capacitor, and they got a wave that was more like this. And that's that's because when you charge a, a capacitor through a resistor, it charges up fast initially, mm -hmm. and then as you get up near the voltage that you're charging from, it slows down, and it really it never get uh, theoretically it never it never gets there. I mean, it comes up to 99.99999, and it takes a long time to get all the way charged. All right, uh, and and that that's the way scopes were back in the 60s when it had like 12 tubes. Uh, then, uh, a lot, it, somewhere in the 70s, in the mid 70s, Heathkit started putting out transistorized scopes. And of course, with transistors, you know, they're smaller than tubes, so you can have more than 12 of them in a, in a scope. You can have like 20 or 30 or 40. And you, you can use a fancier circuit, and you can have a constant current source to charge your capacitor. 
So rather than just have a resist resistor like they had in the, in the 60s, they had a constant current source, which involves another transistor and maybe a diode. And they would actually get a, a sawtooth wave like that. Um, I, I've got a uh, an oscilloscope tube. It's kind of an odd one. All the oscilloscope tubes were, were, were round, five-inch tubes, and they were about this long. It's an electron tube. There's an electron gun back here. The, the thing is, is evacuated, and it, sh it shoots a beam of electrons at, at the face of the tube. Because the face of the tube has like 1,000, 2,000 volts on it, that's what attracts the electrons. And it hits the face of the tube. There's a phosphor, and it make, makes a, a line or whatever. The reason it makes a line is that the electron beam is deflected. It, it's moved left or right, up and down. In TV sets, they used magnetic deflection. That is, outside of the tube, or on picture tubes, you can still buy tubes like this. You can still buy TV sets that have CRTs in them. But they have digital receivers, and they're cheap. And you won't be able to buy them much more, probably. Um, magnetic deflection is it makes the in insides of the, of the picture tube less complicated. But the coil has to be beautifully wound. Everything has to be as linear as possible. And they did that with TV sets. The way scope tubes are arranged is in inside the scope tube, there are plates. There there's two left and right and two up and down. And uh, the left and right and up and down, they are, they are all in the same place. You, you got the up and down ones first nearest the electron gun, and then another inch down the tube, you got the left and right uh, plates. And there's a reason why they have the up and down ones first, the frequency response or something. And rather than have magnetic deflection, you, you, just, you just put in this type of signal, a sawtooth wave, on your plates in there, and as the beam goes past the plates, if one plate is more positive, it, it moves the beam from, from your viewpoint, from left to right, and then back real fast, and left to right, and back real fast. Back, back real fast is when this goes back to zero. Um, so that, that's the mechanical part of a, an oscilloscope. Uh, you, you take a signal in, you amplify it and apply it to the vertical plates and you make the beam go up and down and you, you locally generate a sawtooth wave like this and make the beam go across the screen. And if you, if you do those two things, you don't get this compressed wave, you get a nice pretty picture of a sine wave. Um, one other uh, little technical fact, back in the 50s and 60s, the scopes had uh, free-running horizontal oscillators. Uh, if you want to look at a one megacycle signal, you would adjust your uh, free-running horizontal oscillator to some sub-multiple of that, like 200 kC or 500 kC or megacycle. And you would then get, with 200 kC, you get five sine waves, or at 500 kC horizontal frequency, you get two sine waves of your one megacycle signal input signal. Or at, at a, if you match the frequencies, you wouldn't get a circle because one, one is your input sine wave and the other is your uh, sawtooth wave, which has the same frequency as this. And you, you'd get one sine wave on the screen. Um, then in order to get a stable picture, you would take a sample of your input sine wave and apply it to your horizontal oscillator on the scope and sync the free-running horizontal oscillator. And then the picture would stabilize. So you, you, you've seen the, the uh, sine wave on, on the science fiction thing. First it goes, you know, with all the sine waves run back to the screen, and, and then it kind of locks in, you get a stable picture of a sine wave. That's your horizontal frequency frequency getting locked in to the uh, input signal. 
and you, you could lock it in at you know one time or, or, or you know one, once every cycle or uh, as I said you, you could lock it in at, at a at a sub multiple like a 200 kc and get five pictures on the screen all right then in the 70s and with more more parts Heathkit started making transistorized scopes and they came out with the swiggered treep <laughs> uh, uh, tr triggered sweep <laughs> and then you didn't have the, the big advantage is you didn't have to have an exact multiple arrangement between the input signal and the horizontal frequency you could you could look at at any portion of the input signal you could look at the leading edge only or you could look at ten and a half wave shapes or thirteen and three quarter wave shapes with with the triggered sweep you you trigger on the lead, leading edge of your income incoming signal and you, you'd adjust uh, the, the length of your sawtooth to like that or like this and it, it if you had your sawtooth go faster you might only get one sine wave on the screen if you had your, your saw, sawtooth wave go a little bit longer you might get two or three sine waves on the screen and if you had your sawtooth frequency be much much longer than one cycle you'd get several sine waves on the screen and that the this this the heath kit scopes in, in the I, I as i said i built one in the mid 70s early 70s actually and they were worth having my dad had one but and we sold it at the ham fest a heath kit yep was it transistorized no it was two if it was two heath kit yeah. uh I don't think it had a, a triggered sweep. No, button. I don't think it did. But 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 it, it did have a, a halfway decent horizontal oscillator that could be synced to the in input signal. Yeah, my dad showed how to do that. All right, then uh, uh, there's one other little variation on scopes: dual trace. Um, suppose you want to compare two signals. Uh, Greg was talking about comparing two signals from, from two plates of twos and get them in, in phase. But suppose you have two signals and you know one is a pulse and one is a sawtooth, and you want to compare uh, the rise time or, or the, the phase. Um, You, you, you don't actually have to have two scope tubes inside one envelope. You can do this. Uh, it, it, it's usually done with uh, with just the same scope, scope tube. But you have one trace go across the tube, and then you have a, a different vertical amplifier, but synced to the same signal. So, like on, on this scope. Over here, you see two, two red knobs. That's the uh, calibration knobs, actually. There, there, are, there are two vertical amplifiers here. And then over here, th this is the horizontal oscillator, or the, 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 the adjusting the horizontal sweep. And you can, you can select this horizontal oscillator. Uh, you can s select the sink as coming from the A amplifier, or the B amplifier, or, or uh, uh, the, the A synced by the A and the, the B synced by the B, by the C, but by, by the B. The, the important thing is that you, you can uh, put in a signal on the A amplifier and view it, and, and you can view a, a second signal synced by the same uh, for, uh, signals going through the first one, you can compare them. Norm? Is that a dual trace? Or is that, that a single trace? It's a single trace. trace. It's a five trace. Uh, but, but basically, it's a, it's a dual trace. Okay. Um, also, uh, 
as most scopes of this complexity do, it, it, this has a, a gate output out, out here or, or a standard signal. Turn this on and, oh, scope probes. You got to have a scope probe. You can't just use a piece of 58 and, and hook. You can. You can get a BNC connector and use a piece of 58 and connect it to where you want to go, but you may load down your, your uh, signal. A scope probe is typically, uh, a, it attenuates your signal by a factor of 10. It also then load, loads your signal uh, by very much less than, by, uh, the loading is only one-tenth on the signal. So if you have a high impedance uh, source that you don't want to load down, you use a, a, a 10x probe, a, a 10 times reduction probe. Um, there's our trace. The, the, the horizontal oscillator is, is running and it's producing a signal going, going across the screen. And here's a sample signal provided by the scope. And uh, this, this is a one volt, one volt peak to peak wave. So from top, this, this is a square wave. One volt, zero volt, one volt, zero volt. And did you notice the, uh, the top of the trace goes up a certain amount? Well, let's see. Uh, this vertical amplifier is set to 50 millivolts per division. Wait a minute, 50, yeah, that's like 0.05. Oh, but this is a... a a 10x probe, this probe reduces the signal by a factor of 10. So uh, this 0.05 that the scope is measuring is actually 0.5 volts per box per centimeter. So it's going up two centimeters, this is a, it's going up one volt. Um, we, we can set it to Point one, a hundred millivolts per box. Now it's it. And now, now it's showing a one volt per box. It, it, it's showing it, the, the signal is one tenth of a volt high, but this being a 10x probe, this means that the signal is one volt high. Um, <coughs> Let's see. Uh, this is a complicated scope. It has a lot of buttons on it. That's why I bought it. What, what I want to do is, is show two traces. The, the second amplifier has, has nothing going in. We have trace A and trace B, and, and we can adjust their positions. This is the this is the A channel, and it's, it's DC coupled. This this is the B channel. The A channel has a signal going in. The B channel doesn't. channel uh, has a signal going into it and we see there's a one volt signal 
and the B channel has a signal going into it, and we see it's a one volt signal, but it isn't stable. How come? Oh yeah, we're sinking off the A channel, and the A channel doesn't have anything going into it. So over here, you have to uh, Uh, can't do that. No. Um, if we put the same thing, if, if I could parallel the two, but I don't have two probes and I don't have a jumper. Anyway, the, 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 there's nothing going into A, so it shows a flat line. There's something going into B but it's, it's sinking off of A, and when it doesn't find anything, it goes across, and it, it, it waits, like it, it's got a red light, and then it turns right on the red light. It, it does go across, but it's not synced to anything, so that, that's why uh, we don't have a stable picture on the second line. Also, this can be either AC or DC coupled. Um, back, back to Let's just do A. And let's get it two volts, uh, two boxes high. This is, this is DC coupled. This is AC, AC coupled. There's our line. And AC coupling shows that it's going up a half volt and, and down a half volt. The average is zero because it's AC coupled. Um, in other words, there's no direct connection. If, if you have a direct connection and, and uh, measure the DC, it goes from zero to one volt, which is what this is actually doing, uh, which means that a, a, an oscilloscope can measure voltage. Roughly. I mean, if, if, if a line went up there and stayed, so you, you could measure a battery with this. If I had a one and a half volt battery, this line would go up three bo at, at a half volt per box, this, this would go up three boxes. The line would go up three boxes to measure a one and a half volt battery. You can measure a, a battery, you can measure a 12 volt power supply, you can measure a 300 volt power supply with this. But not accurately. It'll show you that it's 300 volts. It won't show you that it's the difference between 301 and 303. What it will show you on a 300 volt tube type radio power supply, it'll show you uh, 120 cycle ripple. It'll show you that, that it goes up, you know, to 310 and back down to 300, 310, 300, and the interval is uh, like, was it six, 16 milliseconds? Eight, six, what, what's, what's 60 cycles? 120 would be, uh, anyway, you figure out the milliseconds and you, you, you find that the ripple is usually a 120 cycle ripple. All right, one, one other thing you can do with this, if I have a wire, well, here's, here's one of the wire. I'm going to set this for AC coupled, and the, the most sensitive I, I can be. What do you suppose it's trying to show me there? You're picking up AC induction. No. Pro probably 60 cycles. Oh, a sine wave, just like we started with. Um, what's the frequency of that sine wave? 60. Limits. You're not supposed to come up with the answer yet. I was limits. You're, you're, you're supposed to say what? See what is the frequency of, of it? Um, wait, uh, John, do not adjust yourself. <laughs> this okay. is the twilight zone. <laughs> we are in good call. Rod Sterling is turning the knobs. Um, look at looking between the two peaks. What for one cycle? Uh, there's about one, two, not 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 quite three boxes. 
what is the horizontal frequency or, or sweep set to? It's set to five milliseconds. Let me. Uh, Where's that signal being generated? From his hand. <laughs> You've become an antenna or a condenser? Yeah, yeah yes. Which, which is it? I, I, I'm, I'm, in it. I'm picking up whatever's the strongest signal around here, which has to, happens to be 50, 60 cycles since over the surface of my skin, I'm touching the probe. Whoa. And I'm touching it too hard. Um, and I'm, I'm adjusting my horizontal position so it, so it peaks on the first line. Mm -hmm. And then the next peak is three a little bit later. Oh, th 15 milliseconds. 16. 16. More than 15. Let's see, uh, 16 milliseconds into a second, into a thousand, comes out about 60. So it, when, you, when, when you start using these things, that you, you, that becomes uh, second nature. Sixteen milliseconds is the period between sixty-cycle waves. And if we were looking at a two two radio power supply, we would see the level three hundred volts, and and we would see that it it, it it had ripple on it at twice this rate. It had a hundred and twenty cycle ripple. So rather than you know. One ripple in 16 milliseconds would have a, a little sawtooth, and another every eight milliseconds because that's 120 seconds. The, the other thing you can do is you can just pick up whatever's in the air. I basically have a wire antenna and so if anybody transmitted RF in this room this thing would pick it up now you know no yes yes it would I mean you'd pick up 144 meg that'll no. go up to 144 yeah. meg yes Try it. Th this, this is a hundred meg scope Try it. Punch I your... thought it was a 20 okay that's the reason okay and uh, now 100 megacycle, uh, and, and I mean, and the old Heath kits were like five meg scopes, and that transistorized one I built, I think, I think it had a bandwidth of 15 megs. This is 100, 100 meg scopes. They, uh, you, you can buy used 200 meg scopes for one, two, or three hundred dollars at the Hamfest. When I say this is a 100 meg scope, it's not tuned to 100 megs. It, <coughs> it will display any signal. And any sine wave, whether it's 60 cycles, or 80 meters, or 6 meters, or up to 100 megs, at, at the same uh, level. It, it, it has a bandwidth of 100 megs. It'll display any signal in there uh, in a calibrated way. Now, when you go about beyond 100 megs, it begins losing gain. So if you, if, if you transmit on... 146.52. Uh, this and, and, and this picked up a, uh, a one volt signal. It'd probably only show it as you know a 0.5 or 0.6 volt signal, but it'd show it. When you, if you get up to two, three, four hundred megacycles, it wouldn't show it. It'd crap right. out. Back to uh, who's got a handy talkie? One right here. What mm -hmm. frequency? Any frequency, five two. Just one, just one. I'm on five two zero right STT. Right. Do that again. Maybe zero off JR. I am. Hmm. It, it it it's deflecting vertically. Oh, Do yeah. it again. KD zero STT. On one forty six. Five two zero. Hey, I, I can see some. Do it some more. Ne now, ne next thing, how to make it go? You got one of these things at home. You, you turn it on, and you don't have a trace. Read the instructions. 
<laughs> what? Uh, I got it at a flea market. There weren't any instructions. Download Yeah, download them. There's everything going on there. Uh, I don't understand what I'm reading. I go back so, to school. First, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to simplify it. I'm going to select on the input A trace only or, or, or channel 1. I'm, I'm not going to have two traces. I'm only going to I'm only going to deal with one. Next, uh, I I, I want to uh, you know wh why can't I see anything? Well, it, is it going crazy? Is is it going uh, up? You know, past the limits of the scope tube, reduce the gain. Uh, sw switch the amplifier gain here, uh, and, and if you don't if you don't have a signal, in increase the gain and, and see, see if you can, you know. Uh, third, I don't even have a trace. What is the problem? It's not going across. Well, the most obvious one is the intensity of the beam. Uh, next, the controls for the horizontal. Um, on on the, 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 the two or three main controls are the uh, frequency or, or the time division controlled by this large knob and whether or not it goes across which is controlled by the, these knobs if you, uh, if you if you twist these knobs back and forth you can get to a place where you don't get a signal No trace. No that, that's because uh, I, I've messed with the mode here. Uh, I'll select normal on the mode and I'm getting a trace every, every once in a while but it, it won't it's not continuous. If, if you select if you select normal you have to adjust for the, the level of the signal. If you select auto it, it it works. You get a trace. And over here, uh, uh, the display, you can have the A display or A uh, in intensified or uh, a, a B delayed signal. You can have A delayed by B or, or vice versa. Um, you can basically you can do some algebraic things with the with the uh, with the uh, horizontal sweep, mm -hmm. but in, in in most cases for us, all we want to do is stick this on a 300 volt tube type power supply, and see that indeed there's only a couple of volts of ripple, no more than 10, 12 volts. You don't want to see 50 or 75 volts of ripple when the capacitors are bad. <coughs> 